image comes to mind when you think about the paper industry? Dead and dying? A dinosaur? Maybe no longer relevant in the computer age? Well, I've worked in this industry for over 41 years, and the words that come to my mind are innovative and sexy. Our company owns a paper mill in Westbrook, Maine, that was built in 1854, and we still operate a machine that was built in 1905. That machine produces rolls of paper that weigh about a half a ton. They're then taken to another department where they're covered with a special coating and cured with electron beam technology. Then a metal roll makes a decorative pattern on this paper. Our customers take this paper and use it as a reusable mold. They pour vinyl, urethane on it, produce a fabric, and that fabric makes handbags, sneakers, soccer balls, and the dashboards in your car. In fact, the Westbrook Mill is 40% of the world's supply of release paper. So that means a lot of you drove here today in a car that had a dashboard made on main paper. This is a premium product, and what our customers really care about is how many reuses they get out of the product. And if you're in China, they might use it 100 times. So the better we make our product, the less our customers buy. So we need to think of a new model. And we think of ourselves as cellulose manipulators rather than paper makers. And we're really good at making textures and patterns. What if instead of making decorative patterns, we made functional patterns? And a couple ideas we're working on. One is to mimic patterns made in nature that naturally inhibit bacterial growth. And take that fabric, put it into hospitals, and reduce bacteria without using chemicals. What if we combine texture and chemistry and we produce surfaces that can harvest water from the air to make drinking water? We also own a pulp mill in Minnesota, and that pulp mill makes dissolving pulp. Many of you in the audience are wearing clothes made from dissolving pulp. Your tag might say Tencel, Modal, or Rayon. They're comfortable, they're breathable. And actually, my dress is made from dissolving pulp. <laughs> dissolving pulp also is made into bioplastics, and it's even used in the food you eat as a thickener to make low-fat products like yogurt taste a little better. So you are not only wearing wood, you're also eating it. This kind of innovation is going on throughout the paper industry. And almost anything that can be made from petroleum can be made from wood. Bioplastics, jet fuel, chemicals. And the world is very, very interested in replacing petroleum with a renewable product like wood. The Lego company has said that by 2030, they will eliminate petroleum-based raw materials and they will place them with plant-based raw materials. So, think about Maine right now. Maine has an abundant natural resource that's renewable, and we also have world-class research and development going on to innovate products. So what can you do if you're interested in replacing petroleum-based products with wood? You can support increased public funding for research and development to help get these products to market sooner. You can also encourage young people to go into the paper industry. These are great jobs. We will be hiring about 10% of our workforce each year in the coming years. And with a high school diploma, you can make $60,000 a year with great benefits. And this is not your grandfather's paper mill. I'm sure glad I made the decision to go into the paper industry 41 years ago. I'd like to update a scene from the movie The Graduate. I want to tell you one word. Just one word. 
wood. <laughs> the future is in wood. Think about it. Almost anything that can be made from petroleum can be made from wood. Thank you.